Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Addiction Master on social media. Today I'm going to be talking about a pretty good animated show called Invincible. I heard a lot of good things about this. I vaguely remember this in the comics. A friend of mine had asked me about the name and I do remember it as the indie comic and maybe I don't even remember it as an indie comic maybe I thought it was like part of image or maybe it was there's um some familiarity with it and I knew kind of some of the story beats and some of the arcs they had in the comic so it wasn't something I was die hard uh picked up or followed but I I sort of have a memory of enjoying the comic book in a sense so with that in mind and some great uh praise for the show I didn't read much about it here and there. I finally got to watch it, and I was a little disappointed. The show is very good, uh, probably for some people great. It could be one of those shows where it's just not hitting me in the feels. But it's an, it's an Amazon uh, original show. It stars the voices of Stephen Yoon, J.K. Simmons... Sandra O. Oh, it's by Robert Kirkman, who's done so many arcs in different comics, and there's so much pressure, I think, for the comic industry to find unique things. This was one of them. I'm so happy it's done. I'm so happy it's doing well, and people are loving it. But when I watched it, again, I had a feeling like with uh, Ledge, uh, what did I just watch? I did a podcast on um, Jupiter's Legacy, which was a live action show. I felt an overbearing presence of, oh, I'm a teenager. Oh, I have a life. And we're not going to do a 28 minute show or 22 minute cartoon show. We'll make it like 42, 47 minutes and will have this great uh, mix. And it didn't work for me. But I can see this working for so many people. It's got great moments. It's filled with awesome fights and premises. So many themes are done well. But when you add, for me, when you add that teenage drama thing into it, and you don't for me really kind of uh hit the mark you it's added by this premise of the villain or the supposed villains in the in the season and particularly one that is just alluded to and you never find out anything and it's supposed to be this big reveal at the end of the season and it falls flat for me some great voice acting there's some really good things they tried to do and did it well i don't see a big stain on this uh something that is like you know this sucks or there's a uh, major problem with it i just didn't feel it hit everything for me in the right way i didn't want to be in the dark about certain characters for so long and not knowing what's going on with these characters then they show up again and you know i don't know uh i think i usually pay attention to these things especially when i'm trying to um really absorb the content and know that i'm going to actually do a uh podcast of sorts on it but we have a plot of a young man young teenager who's inherited his father's powers. His father's one of the most powerful beings in the planet. You find out the origins or the history of everything all the way to the end, but in jest, there's a race of beings on a planet. They send out people on special missions and protect the world, and he comes and he protects Earth, falls in love, has a kid, and we're off to the races some great voice acting in this uh show just amazing i guess because i recognize some of the voices but the ones i don't it seems to work well and it really plays well to all the nuances they try to do i just don't feel it um 
So I don't give that many uh, major plots or spoilers, but there's one I think I have to talk about because it kind of just puts a damper on the whole season for me. You're trying to find out why or who the guardians of the world were killed. And basically, as Omni-Man is doing his thing, his son doesn't have his powers yet, and... It's one of those, hey, son, you, you, one day you'll be whatever like me. But there's another group out there, and there's Guardians of the Globe. They have a roster that's okay. It's pretty cool here and there. It gets changed up, but they're killed. And it gets put on the back burner, but it's something important. And then there's clues, and then the wife... Of Omni Man, uh, the mother of Invincible, is sort of involved in it with this global defense, uh, you know, um, agency type thing that uh, kind of runs things. And you're looking at it and watching it, and you're like, "Oh, I was really impressed." And I'm waiting, and I'm thinking, like, you know, episode four, I'm gonna get the bomb dropped, and we're gonna try to uh, put the pieces back together. No, they just keep throwing situations that detract from the main point, introducing side villains. Well, I say side villains because I don't want to give one of the major plots away, but you, you kind of know right away who killed them, the Guardians of the Globe, but you don't know if it was a clone, if it was a, an impersonator, if, if there was mind control involved. And this is the scene that's kind of going on in the background because people are catching on or the agency is like, oh, wait, the evidence points to this person, right? So how are we going to go about this? And I don't think they did it well. Uh, I just find myself lost sometimes. Just, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm absorbed in the action and the things that are going on. But when it's broken up with a lot of this teen stuff, which they do well, I just don't feel... It's for me. It just doesn't feel like I'm going to be, um, you know, catered to in a show like this, which is fine. A lot of times you do a review, you're trying to give your surface thoughts on something that's going on, and you kind of recognize its greatness or parts of it that are just amazing. But hey, it's just not for me, you know, um... I'm just not in the right mind frame or uh, such. All these things could be part of it, but I will not look at it as a critical failure or um, there's so much wrong with the show. However, I don't feel excited for like a new season. I don't, I'm happy I watched it, but with the anticipation I had for watching this show, I'm not in that same frame for the second season. I just don't have that. Um, desire. It don't feel like it bloomed and left me in a good spot and then all of a sudden, bang. Oh my god, I can't wait for next season. They did a lot of um, iffy stuff in my... in my. And now look, you gotta, you gotta take a graphic novel or if it was a run in the comics. I think it was actually a couple of runs in the comics of Valiant or Image. But they had, an, they had to adapt it and it's based on the image comic, so what are you going to do? I understand. It's got to be hard. Um, when I developed the world I created and wrote my novel, uh, coexisting with it, I wrote an animated show. Um, I wrote the screenplay for the pilot and wrote out an outline for 12 episodes. And I had a comic book tie-in, and you all kind of pieced together uh, the the story in a different way so the cartoon would be his teenage years when the master leaves and he goes on the road alone the comic book series would be the origin and the books are you know their own entity but they have a presence uh, in the present so to speak and i think when they look at these things when they do the comics and that's not a priority you've got uh, pictures and art to Tell the story and it carries you along, and you got to adapt that for TV or movies. So I understand it. I cannot 
shit on the show. I'm not saying it sucks. It just feel, felt wrong to me. Like I was being sold something that wasn't um, what I wanted to buy. But I'm not upset. I'm not, um, you know, feeling betrayed or I lost time or investment on something. It's a really good show. And some people, I would, I would debate, you can call it a great show. Fine. You like that they hit on the themes of being a teenager, and sometimes they do it well. I don't like the um, methods they use in the blending of things. I don't want to wait till the last episode to get a reveal that falls flat. That just doesn't work for me. And then you have this upping of the stakes. You up them, you keep upping the stakes until you get to the point where you realize that this villain is determined he's going to do what he has to do and then he stops for a reason and this reason just made me laugh i just was like you're you're kidding me right this is this is what stops him it just felt fucking wrong and if that's a summation of my feelings of the show i would say a nitpick would be the music sometimes it worked for me sometimes it didn't but I get it. You're trying new things. You're, you know, trying to be unique and bring a uh, a comic book icon, in a sense, to the animation. And you're trying to get it um, to keep the feel of the comic and honor the creator and keep all the themes going. And, you know, fine. There's a lot to hold, handle. I just don't think they did it very well for me. But I try to be humble enough and at least honest enough to say I'm impressed with it to a certain extent. There's so many things to point out. When you start with the first episode and you're really hooked on, I'm going to say by the third episode, fourth episode, I start to wonder what their priorities were. So... My instincts told me before I even started watching was, oh, this is going to be 22 minute cartoon episodes fleshed out over a season and let's see what they do. It's, it, it was more in the 42, maybe I'm wrong, 42, maybe the pilot was like 47 minutes long, but you know, about 42 minutes long, which gives you the indication it's an hour long show and the commercials are done and so on and so forth. I didn't feel the impact on some of these things, and it's because it's it's trying to balance this. Hey, I'm a teenager who just got my powers. I don't know what I'm doing. I got to train. I got my father who's the greatest superhero, and we're going to do things, but I'm a teenager, and I'm going through this stuff, and my mom and my dad seem to be a perfect couple. Things look nice. Oh, friends. I got the friends involved. And who knows about my secret? Who am I telling? Who am I not telling? Is it is it messing up my relationships? Fine. And I've seen it before. And I can't say I've seen it so done well in a, ca- in a cartoon or an animated show. But maybe you better watch what you wish for. Because a lot of times I found myself over the years going, hey, why can't we make an hour long uh, show why does that have to be 22 minutes like um archer and uh holly quinn show which was amazing and they just uh short but maybe that's an indication for me uh i used to say it about the marvel netflix shows like daredevil and luke cage and the defenders maybe it's better not to string things out over 22 episodes like the flash does or supergirl they tend to become a routine, um, you know, just uh, sh- uh, shuffling around of the same things drawn out over a season, and it just becomes watered down and too much of a, you know, a routine type thing, and it just doesn't work for me. I've tried so hard to get back into the Flash. Arrow tricked me because it went bad and it got a little better, and legends of tomorrow i can't do it but i found myself going holy shit i love daredevil jessica jones probably the best first season amazing uh solid shows if you want to keep 
Iron Fist is a weak link, but we're talking about a cartoon and animated series, and granted, it's done very well. This is not a diss on the show. I, I like it a lot, but I'm disappointed. Maybe it's my expectations, and that's fine. This is something that was uh, already known to me in a sense. I wasn't too into it, where I would have been biased and like, oh, well, this is Superman. You're not doing him right. So taking that all in mind, I do recommend people watch the show. I think it's got a lot to offer. I just found it a little disappointing in, in when I watched it, especially when I got to the end. I'm like, you know, okay, this is a decision you made, and it didn't work with me, but man, there's so much good about it. The voice acting's excellent. The artwork is uh, sometimes spectacular, but sometimes a little, you get a little taken back. I was a little like, um, Hey, there are things that happens probably in shows, right? And the budget goes this way. Well, we have to redo something, and how do you do it in animation? Well, maybe it's a little cheaper. Anyway, it's not. It's just a nitpick. The movie, the the music, a nitpick. The this, this decision to hide the main uh, reason for things, I think, was a mistake, and possibly the editing in balancing the teenage life. Keeping track of the villains, keeping track of any plot and through line, it gets lost in the mix for me. It just doesn't feel like a whole solid, satisfying, you know, uh, event for me. And like I said, when I got to the end, I found myself going, I'm not interested really in a second season. I'm happy I watched it. It's got some incredible things and there's that balance too of what do you want you know i play role-playing games dungeons and dragons and an amalgamated superhero where i'll just involve everything in the marvel saga system role-playing and you know you play with enough people and some people want to play the wolverine type character who's anti-hero who's going to kill some people play villains that's fine and there's the general people want to play like a spider-man friendly neighborhood hero this is showing you all the, um, you know, uh, nuances in it and showing you how brutal it can be, how bloody it can be. And uh, the balance it's trying to do kind of reminds me again of Jupiter's, Leg Jupiter's Legacy, where they're just trying to show them chilling out and drinking beer. And, it, like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right for me. And it could be just me. However, it does taint my outlook on the show i don't give ratings and as you can tell i'm avoiding giving major plots and twists but i'm going to say i'm going to say this is one of the better animations out there the show itself it hits so many things right and so many things wrong for me i well you know what not wrong so many things that i didn't agree with because it's not that they're doing it wrong they, they have a plan they're doing it and i'm Again, so happy it's successful. I'm so happy there's a legitimacy given to this premise. Now, it might not have been done to my liking. Like, I did um, a podcast on, like, Scarlet Witch, the Disney live-action show. And for the first three episodes, I'm like, hey, how did anybody stick around? Like, I could see the fact that I liked it didn't make it a better um, uh, or, or proper thing to do it's a uh, three episodes of zaniness that people can get pulled out of and not feel immersed in the show for me it pulls itself through and it's not perfect but here i got an animated show about superheroes or something that's like near and dear to me it's not a character like i said that i'm super into and followed and but i did know enough about it to go wow i could really get into this and I'm at the end of this going, hey, you know what? Great effort. Probably a great show. For me, a little disappointing. Little hits and misses along the way. But the overall mixture of teen, superhero, adult type premises, your themes. And it doesn't land right with me. That's all. It's just something that happens from time to time. Um, watching the animated Transformers, 
the first season. I really love the second season. I like, but there's so many moments in it. But I, I'm so interested in um, seeing where this goes, the premise of it, the thought of it, the framework of it. That it's, I think it's disappointing that I'm not excited about the second season or third season. Uh, the way they leave things is a little iffy to me. I want to see a, um, you know, a better blend of these things. And you go overboard sometimes. And that's what I mean by the family, the action, the drama. All of it is new in this type of thing. I think they are trying to do something new and kudos for them i recommend everybody watch invincible it's a really good show for me i have little things that bother me with it i'm not super excited about a second season but who knows things could change i might see something that gets me hooked and you know what and most likely i will watch it i mean it's uh, a lot of good things about the show but in the long run I see this as a success. I see it as a milestone in a way. Got the voice acting, which you always want from some of the great animations. And talking about like, I've done podcasts on like Batman, the animated series, the X-Men, and what made them special for their time. This has some of those elements, so I got to give it credit. It does really try. It doesn't feel added on nonsense just for the fact that oh we got this special guest or voice acting and like i said you might see a couple of corners cut graphically but the whole premise kind of um is something i think that's cool to have out there i really think it's a great addition to this genre that's growing and people say when we're going to get the fatigue and it's not going to happen if you do good product and this is definitely a good product. It's something I recommend, uh, especially if you're looking to get into this genre and you want a little bit of that blend. That's fine. Um, Steven Yoon, I think he's the uh, uh, guy from Walking Dead back in the day before he got his head smashed in, I think. Uh, some great things. A lot more good things than bad, that's for sure. There's no glaring elements in this that are going to knock you out of the show it's not like that to me really good show borderlining on great but has enough things in it that kind of sour the whole experience but hey there's a lot of characters to get into they could spotlight a couple of things and maybe change it around but i don't think they need to not for me it's so good that i think it's gotta um I think it's got to keep what it's doing to keep that. It's not my mindset that they're trying to please or adhere to. They're trying to make something that kind of lets other people get involved in this type of superhero world in a different way. And I think that's a, an achievement. There's, I think, uh, eight episodes in the season. And like I said, I think it was a mistake to wait for the end to kind of reveal motivations and stuff uh the viltramite empire uh, you know the dealings with earth and it's a thing that you're trying to piece together that just doesn't come together well but good luck with the show i'm so happy it's out there for people who love it i doubt there'll be people who hate it this you can't i don't think you can hate it it's just one of those things that's that good. But I think there's a little bit of it's a little bit of disappointment in me and a little bit of I don't know, sadness that I want to um like I try to associate things also with my mood and my feelings and like I'm seem okay, like things are going okay. I I wanted to really love this. But I guess that's the price you pay when you devote so much and you hear about something and you're like, oh I devote my energy and you put your own thoughts into it and it doesn't live up to expectations but far from a failure far from a even uh you know something that's bad i would recommend this go watch invincible amazon i don't know how you uh you know i don't know if like they release it on other things but 
it's something I think is worth watching. You have an adult animated superhero show, and it's got some great points to it. Some great moments, and they far outweigh any little nitpicks and stuff. So there you go. My impressions on Invincible. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care of yourselves out there. My best to you and yours.